the, is the only person who has been affected by that SP mentality, the only one that I know. There may be others, but I don't know. In Birmingham, for sure, I never heard it. Dawood Adib is the only one who retracted from mistakes that he made. Abu Khadija, Abu Hakim, those brothers, that organization, SP, they were commanded, advise, retract publicly mistakes that you made. Not once did they retract. Dawood Adib, he retracted when he said that statement about Sayyid Qutb. He wants to die like Sayyid Qutb. It was a mistake. It was brought to his attention. He retracted publicly. He said that the ulama, when they want to gauge and know a person's Salafiyah from America and the West, the ulama referred to SP. That's ghulu. Dawud Adib, he retracted in public. And I say, alhamdulillah, for Dawud Adib or any of us to be tabi'un fi sunnah is better than, be, than being an imam in a bid'ah. For you to follow people, you're not a leader, you're following. It's better to be a follower, but you're on the sunnah, than it is to be the leader in innovation. The leader in these innovative methods and ideas, and jarh with ta'adil and all of this stuff, you're confusing the people with. Another issue, ikhwani, is this. Disrespecting the ulama about this. Okay, I made that statement, it was the wrong way to say it. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, it was the wrong way to say that. It was the wrong way. They're still mentioning that. After it was retracted so many times. Now, I'm telling you I retracted it so many times. And they're going to probably, Allah Adam, still use it. But anyway, the point that I want to make here is the Haddadis, that's their way. We respect the ulama. Now, when that statement was made about I saw something in Sheikh Rabi, not the correct wording, they ran with that in the dunya and they still run with it. Okay. But look at the double standards. Abu Khadija said that a Sheikh will see Allah lied and oppressed him. And a Sheikh will see Allah has to come back and rectify what he said. Go look at and read. Rawda.org, R-A-W-D-A-H.org. This translated thing of what Sheikh, Sheikh Wasi Allah said in regards to those statements. Disrespect. But in their eyes, it's not disrespect. When they say things like, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, when he wrote the book, Rifqan Ahl Sunnah Bi Ahl Sunnah, and that book is Dalil. They're telling us you're just following him because you don't want to follow. Come on, you know the people's hearts. You don't know the people's hearts. That book is a book of Dalil. And the Sheikh said, Three sheikhs, and he told where they were from. Everybody knew who he was talking about. Three sheikhs in the forefront of this. He was talking with tafsil and with knowledge. They said, he doesn't know. He do That's disrespectful. All of those sheikhs, they don't know. One of them described, as I mentioned the other day, a sheikh, Yahya al-Hujuri from al Yemen. They said he was... So what? He just works. We have some malahavat on him. We got some points against him too. Malahavat? Wallahi, as I mentioned to you guys before, Ikhwani, a Sheikh Yahya al hujuri is more knowledgeable than Sheikh Ubaid al Jabir, and his works are much more. And you look at the refutation of, refutation of a Sheikh Yahya al hujuri and I don't agree with everything that he says because I'm Salafi. He's much more knowledgeable than me. I would love to be a student. I would love to be a student of a person of hadith like that. Fiqh of the hadith. But I'm not going to agree with everything he says because he's not masoom. He's going to take a position, I'm going to take another position. He himself doesn't agree with his Sheikh Muqbil in every affair. But if you were to look at his works, if you were to look at his takhrijat and his tahqiqat, if you were to look at the, his, his knowledge, it's bigger than Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabiri. But some people just follow Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabiri's position because a taqlid. So the Yemenis, the brothers who are studying Damaj, they can easily say, like SP says to us, you're just taking that position because you, you, you're just following Abdul Muhsin because you want to do what you want to do. You're just following a Sheikh who made the job because you're just doing what you want to do. No. You have to have Husna Dhan. If you don't have Dalil and proof about that, don't say it. So the point here is they have a catalog of offenses where they disrespected the ulama of al-Islam. 
Another issue, Lechwani, and we're almost finished here, is that those brothers allow themselves from their decrepit, false minhaj. They can disagree with ulama and the ijtihad and the positions of ulama, but you can't disagree with the sheikhs that they follow. Before I said they have three sheikhs that they follow tenaciously. A Sheikh Rabi', a Sheikh Ubaid al Jabiri, and Al Ustad Muhammad ibn Hadi al Madkhali, who's younger. That doesn't mean that's all they listen to. They're going to make a big deal. What about Falah Ismail? What about Muhammad al Anjuri? We know that those people come to you. What about Hassan al Banna? What about all of the people who come there? Abdullah al Bukhari. What about Ahmed Bazmul? What about Ahmed al Subayr? Tariq al Subayr? What? We know that you have those people, but we're, you know what we're talking about. You look for whatever Sheikh Rabi says, and I don't follow Sheikh Rabi and everything that he says. I don't have to take his position. He says Abu Hassan al Ma'rabi is a mubtadi, and he brings his delil with sincerity. I read those delils, and I don't agree with sincerity. How are you going to force me? to agree, and how are you going to now judge me as being a mubtadi? As Sheikh Rabi said, Abu Muslima is a hizbi, just like Ahmed al-Najmi. Where's the dalil, ya Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi, that this man, Abu Usama, should be dealt with like the mubtadi? Is the dalil because he says that these people are muqallideen, that makes you a, to be dealt with like a mubtadi? Because he said they're muqibeen, now he gets the ruling of being dealt with like a mubtadi? That's the dalil? Because he supports Abu Hassan al Ma'rabi, meaning support in their tafsir, their ta'wil is, he doesn't see him as mubtadi. That makes him mubtadi? Because he doesn't see him as being a mubtadi? Allahu Akbar. As Salafiyah, ikhwani, is for the individual to say, I know this man. The Sheikh comes and says, This man is a mubtadi, and I know this man. I'm not going to say just because the Sheikh said it, I'm going to follow him. No way in the world. A Salafi is not like that. I don't know what happened to the minds of the Salafi people who were allowed to be affected by this dawah of SP here and in America especially, especially in America. I don't know and I don't understand. Those young brothers over there in America, don't allow yourselves to be guided by those younger brothers who didn't study anywhere or they didn't accomplish anything when they studied. Don't allow them to be the ones who come into the community with this fitna, with this facade, with this folder. Abu Hassan Malik, he's been affected by that stuff for years. Ghafar Allahu lana wa lahu. These kind of people. I'm not saying this to put them down. I'm saying this so that you would know. And who disputes these issues in America? Who disputes? Our communities have to be moved forward. And my quest and my nasiha is for those people who are giving dawah, all of us, stop being the cause for the religion and our minhaj and our dawah of affecting people in a negative way. Either because of this minhaj that we understand, that's crazy and anti-sociable and it's not productive, or because of our behavior, our behavior. And I don't exclude myself from that. I'm not pointing fingers. I don't exclude my, myself from that. Alam yadhina lilladhina amanu an takhsha qulubuhum li dhikri Allah wa ma nazala min al-haq. The time has come for us to get mature and to get serious about this issue about our dawah. Now again, ikhwani, this nasiha, and I'm going to end here. It is for the uqala from amongst you. As I told you, those people they told the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they're not going to believe him. Until Hatta Tarqa Fisama Walen Nutmen Lirukika Hatta Tunazla Alina Kitab and Nakurahu. Call Subhana Rabbi Hal Kuntu Labashan and Rasula. We won't even believe you, Ya Muhammad. If you start going up in the ladder, you go up to the sky, we won't believe you until you bring a book down that we can read. Allah told the Nabi to say, Subhana Rabbi, glory unto Allah, my Lord. I'm just a Rasul and a human being. I can't bring all of this stuff. The ayat that you're asking for, you're going overboard. So there's some people, I told you before, the only way that they're going to change 
because of the taqlid. Now Allah can do whatever he wants. And Allah, he has the hearts of the servants between his two fingers. And I'm not doing like this using that image. But the Nabi Sallallahu told us that Allah has the hearts of the servants between his two fingers. He could change anyone who he wants to change. From Sunni to, to, to Bid'ah. Bid'ah to Sunnah. Islam to Kufr. Kufr to Islam. He's a shack and he doesn't become that. He becomes opposite of that. But I, some of these people, the only way they're going to accept the sign and the delil of these contradictions, they are disrespected Sheikh Wasi Allah Abbas. And you can't see that? You can't see that? No, they come up with excuses. The only way that they'll change is if Sheikh Rabi himself personally came here, went to America, he went to Lithuania, he went to Al Iraq, he went to Kurdistan, he went to Palestine, and he himself said, like this individual. Change and be with that individual. No, don't say that about Jama'iyya Turah. What they did is similar to what I was doing. They're going to say, no, it's different. So this is a presentation that I hope if someone wants to deal with it, stick with the issues. Stick with the issues. You know, there's a tape that was going around in Birmingham and Khwani by a brother from America. His name is Ahmed Uwais. He died a few years ago. May Allah have mercy upon him. He advised me in the tape something about if uh, silence is golden, if something's speech, gold, silver, I don't know. And he was calling me goldy in it and, and using a lot of language. Wallahi, for me to pass that tape out, that tape reflects negatively on that brother before it reflects negatively on anybody else. How can you see that tape as delil? How can you see that tape? Let's just get goldy. You know, if Allah blessed me with some money, I'm going to get me a very expensive car, inshallah, Rolls Royce or something, and I'm going to get the license plate, goldy on it. I'm going to get that license plate, goldy. Because they make istihza with that name. Istihza. Before, so the point is, the person who's blind, he doesn't care. The important thing is, let me get my enemy. And that's why I'm telling you, if a person has ikhlas, ikhlas, then he'll refute with adab. He won't call names, people out of their names. He'll refute with justice. He'll refute with the haq. If the person doesn't have ikhlas, he won't have al-adl. He won't have al-adab. He won't be upon the haq. His main goal and objective is the isqat of his khasm, to bring his opponent down. That's the important thing. By hook or crook? No. Respond based on delil. Why is it that those sheikhs who get sent here from Jum'iyya, Ihya Turath, they're not deviants and hisbis, but we're deviants and hisbis. Why can a sheikh, Rabi al Madkhali, Shafahullah, go and give a talk with Rafida, Ismaili or Kuffar, Takfiris, Sururis? Who was, invited, who was invited to the thing for your information? Safar al-Hawari, Salman al-Awda, Ayad al-Qarni, Awad al-Qarni, Abdul Wahab al tariri These are people who are known. Sulaiman al-Alwan, Takfiris, Ikhwani, Sururis, Qutbis. Why is it okay for the Sheikh to go and give that talk? And it's not okay for me. And this is what we are telling the people. Stick to the issues. I believe that the Sheikh went to give that talk and he was within his rights in Al Islam to do what they were doing. He didn't bend the rules and I don't believe he would bend the rules and I even think that he would take them to the side and advise them. Okay, when well, we went to do that participation with those brothers. Why the Mujarrad, just because you went, this is, makes you outside of a Salafiyah. That's a corrupt minhaj. That is Tanaqadat. We're going to stop here, inshallah, ta'ala, you young brothers, you young sisters. Fear Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, turn to beneficial knowledge. These people will confuse you. They're going to tell you Abu is trying to trick you. Abu is lying. Okay, lying in what? Prove it. It's okay. Prove it. Prove the lies. No, the sheikh didn't go. No, that's not your relationship with them. Pro prove it. Don't just make statements. That's a salafiyah. When you're sitting there and you're reading and you're listening, you have to say, a Salafiyah is delil, it's proofs. It's not just mere statements. He has something to say, he has something to say. So Umar radiallahu anhu, in with this, 
He was upset one time. He said, how does this ummah, how is it and why is it that this ummah is having ikhtilaf when its nabi is one, it's one nabi, and the qibla is one and the same? Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Ya Amir al we, the companions, were a group of people who, we read the Quran, it was revealed on us, we read it, we understood it. We know why, when, and where it was revealed, and we practice it. He said, as for these people and the people going to come after, they read the Quran, but they don't know why it was revealed, and they don't know and they don't understand it. So the people give a position based upon their ra'i, based upon their opinion. Everyone gives his opinion, and then they'll have ikhtilaf. After ikhtilaf, they'll start fighting. And that's what happened. We turned the Shabbat to a jarh wa ta'adil. You don't know a jarh wa ta'adil. The jarh mufassir is accepted and is given precedence over the ta'adil. Okay. The Sheikh wa Allah has clearly, clearly, clearly made a jarh of those brothers. I say take the good and leave the evil and leave the wrong. But if you can get knowledge from people more qualified and competent, then do so. Let us learn the Quran. I am an ajimi. It's not acceptable for me to give the khutbah in Green Lane Masjid, and then after the khutbah, I can't lead the people in salat because I can't read Surah Al-Fatiha. I go to Canada, and I give a khutbah in Toronto, in Troy Masjid. I give the khutbah about he's this, he's that, and the sheikh said, and this, that. Then it's time for salat. I can't lead the salat because I don't know Surah Al-Fatiha. I can't read, no. All of us are ajim, everybody. No one is excluded here. I see all of you, most of you, ajimis. And even some of the Arabs. We have to learn the Quran. And I think most of the people here don't feel that they really know the Quran. So instead of engaging the people in this issue, when did the Salafis leave the Quran and turn to this stuff? A Salafiyah is paying attention to the Quran first. In the beginning of Islam, the Prophet told the companions who we pattern our religion after. Man kataba anni ghayru quran fal Anyone who wrote other than the Quran, erase it. Don't write the Sunnah down yet. He didn't want the Sunnah to be mixed up with the Quran. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam told the people, Ta'alim al Quran, finnu yakti yom al qiyam al shafi'an lakum. Learn the Quran. It's going to come and be an intercessor for you, yom al qiyam. How is Salafi turned away from the Quran? Al-Imam Shu'bah, Shu'bah ibn Hajjaj, one of the great ulama of Islam and Hadith, he told his students, a hey people, every time you people learn Hadith, it gets you further and further away from the Quran. Not that he was telling them don't learn the Hadith, he was telling them don't learn the Hadith at the expense of the Quran. Jarh wa Ta'adil has been Something that was allowed to preoccupy the people at the expense of the Qur'an. Salafis pay attention to the Qur'an. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman from the companions, he told the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anna al-amana nazalat fi jadri qulub al-rijal fa ta'allamu al-Qur'an, thumma ta'allamu al-Qur'an, thumma ta'allamu al-Sunnah. During the time of the companions, the amana, al-Iman, the amana came down and it came into the hearts of the companions. After the Iman came, they learned the Qur'an and then they learned the Sunnah. So the man doesn't know Surah Al-Fatiha, and he's going to tell us that Al-Imam Al-Awza'i wants to make a point. It's a beneficial point. Al-Imam Al-Awza'i. I heard this example given in three different lessons. You learn something here, and you go and you tell us to people. Three different lessons. He has some issues in his narrations of Al-Hadith. The Hadith Al-Mursal is like this. And the, this is a regular class. The Hadith Al-Mursal. The Hadith Al-Mu'addil. The Hadith that is Munqati'. So Al-Imam Al-Uzayi fell in, Ya Akhi, you telling the people about this issue of hadith, right now the people are not comprehending, those who are listening. Hadith Al-Mursal, most of them don't know. Hadith as munqata most of them don't know. The hadith as muaddal most of them don't know. And you don't really know that issue as well. Picked it up here and there, and now you're gonna put, no, busy the people with the Quran. That was something that was disturbing. Someone's going to say, he doesn't like Ilm Al-Hadith. Because he's blind. He's blind. No. You can't say Al Imam Shu'bah didn't like Ilm al Hadith. Khayrukum man ta'allam al Quran wa allama. The best of you is the one who learns the Quran and teaches it. Meaning, not the one who memorizes the Quran, but the best science to learn out of all of the science, the Book of Allah. 
Salafis are turned away from the book of Allah. We can't read the Quran after all these years in Salafia. And yet we look at ourselves as the vanguard of a Salafia, the cream of the crop. We're the clear Salafis. We're the true ones. And I can't read Surah Al-Fatiha. I can't lead the people in the Salah. When did the Nabi ever, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, pray Salat al Juma and then said to somebody, come, come lead the Salah? And I know that some of the scholars in the Hanbali Madhab said that that's permissible with some conditions. If someone comes, he's the hacking and he wants to lead, you can let him lead. But when did that become the practice? Every time you give the, no, ya akhi, learn the Quran. We're going to stop right here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the tawfiq and the sadad and that he subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't make us responsible for what we have no ability to prevent. That he brings the hearts of the Salafi people together and the minds based upon the kitab and the sunnah and based upon what the Salaf of this ummah were upon and understand. And Allah is a'la and a'lam. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته